previously on Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. Okay, so now let's bring up a ping tool one more time. And if I attempt to ping the Edge Router's interface 20.1, you'll see that it will go through, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. You see, I am getting a, a successful ping to 192.168.20.1. So basically, guests cannot access the main network. Guests cannot access the interface of the edge router on the main network because we've segregated off that main network through the uh, post authorization guest policy. But guests on the um, guest Wi Fi on the 20. Um, 192.168.20 subnet can still ping and access the interface of the edge router on that subnet. So, for example, if I went to 192.168.20.1, which is the interface of the edge router on that subnet, you'll see that it is loading the page and I can continue from this point. All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. And as you saw in that last clip, we created the guest Wi Fi, we separated it onto its own VLAN, and we were able to keep the guests separate from the main network. However, we were still able to uh, access the router's interface and ping the router's interface on the 192.168.20 uh, subnet. So, in this video, as I promised, I'm going to show you how we're going to prevent the guests from accessing the router's interface or any of the services on the um, edge router. So let's take a look at the firewall rule that I built. Let's go over to the firewall policies. And I've added a rule set. I called it VLAN 20 local. You can call it anything you want. You can call it guest. Um, I called it local because it's traffic that's headed toward the um, interface of the router or any of the router services. So the interface that it's on is on switch 0.20, which is the um, VLAN interface. There are two rules, but before we talk about the rules, I want to talk about the default action for this rule set. The default action for the rule set is to pretty much drop everything that's coming from the guest network that's headed toward that router's interface or the router services. So that being said, I had to add two rules that would allow DHCP on port 67 so the clients can get DHCP address from the DHCP server. I also allowed a rule that would pass DNS so that the guests can surf the web and, and internet traffic will pass no problem. So let me bring up a ping tool, but before I do that, let me switch over to the guest network now. And once I make a connection to the guest network, I'll probably lose connection to the router, and that's fine. That's what should happen. But let me bring up a ping tool. Okay, and let's ping the router's interface now that the rules are in place. So there you go, guys. You can see that the request for the ping is timing out as opposed to what you saw in that last clip when the rule wasn't in place, we were able to successfully ping the router. So this is exactly what we want. And just to show you um, one more test, if I bring up another tab, you can see that I'm able to surf the internet. I'm able to get the Bing. Google came right up. However, if I try to get to the web interface of the router on 20.1. You can see it's spinning up here, and you can see down in the lower left-hand corner of my screen, it's just connecting, trying to connect, and eventually it will time out and we'll receive a page like we see here. So that being said, let me go over back to my edge router, and let me switch to my main network again. And once I connect to the main network, I should regain access to my edge router. So there we go. We're connected. Let's try again. 
and there we go okay so what i'm going to do now guys i'm going to delete these rules and this rule set so that i can create them from scratch with you so you can see exactly how i accomplished this so i'll be right back all right, so I've deleted the two rules and the rule set, and we're gonna create it now from scratch together so you can see exactly how to accomplish the task. And by the way, guys, if you missed the video on how to separate your guest network onto its own VLAN, I'll put the link to that video up above in the corner. All right, so let's get started. So we're on the firewall NAT tab, and I'm in the firewall policies tab. And by the way, guys, the rule is gone, so now we should be able to access the edge router's interface uh, via a web browser and a ping tool. In fact, let's give it a shot and let's see what happens. So let me switch over to my guest Wi-Fi. And again, if we lose access to the router, that's that's okay. It's what should happen based on um, the guest policies that we had set up in that last video as well. But let me bring up a ping tool. And if I ping... 192.168.20.1. You can see now we're getting a successful ping response. Likewise, if I bring up a new browser window and we go to 168.20.1, we should also be able to load the uh, edge router's web interface. And there you go. Okay, so let's get close this. Let me get back onto my main network. And let's refresh this page here so we can get connected back into the edge router. There we go. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to, first thing we're gonna do is add a rule set and Again, I called this VLAN 20 because that's where the guest network resides on my home network. You can call this whatever you want. Just to show you, we'll call it guest local. And I'll just say guest local again. The default action we're going to leave set to drop and we're going to say save. Okay, so now you can see we have our rule set we don't have any rules we have to set the interface so let's do that now so let's come over to the actions tab and let's go to interfaces and the interface we want to select is the interface of the uh, guest network on that vlan so it's switch 0 0.20 and again direction we want to be local because we want any traffic that's coming from that guest network that's headed towards the um, router's interface or services so once we have the two selected, let's go ahead and say save rule set. So now it's time to create our first rule. So let's come over to the rules tab and let's say add new rule and we'll call it allow DHCP. And we want the default action for this rule to be accept and we want the protocol to be UDP. We're going to come over to the destination tab and we're going to say port 67 and we're going to say save. Okay, now we have our first rule. Let's add our rule for DNS. So we'll say allow DNS. Again, default action is going to be accept. The protocol is going to be UDP. We'll come over to the destinations tab and the port is going to be 53. And we're going to go ahead and say save. We'll save our rule order. We'll close out our rule. And there, guys, there you go, guys. We've created the same rule that I had before. The only change was that I called it VLAN 20 local. This time I called it guest local. So let's give it a shot and see if the um, rules are applied. So let's test out the rules we just created. Let me switch over to my guest network. And again, if we lose access to the router, that's perfectly fine. Let me bring up a ping tool. 
And now if I ping 192.168.20.1, that's exactly what we want, guys. So you see we're not getting a response from the ping. So that's exactly what we want. The rule is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Let me get out of here. And again, let's bring up 192.168.20.1. And you can see it's just spinning and down at the bottom here, it's saying connecting. And eventually this will time out. So guys, it looks like um, we've successfully accomplished the task at hand. Pretty simple. And now you've got a fully protected guest network. Your guests can come in, surf, you know, do their thing. And yet your main network is uh, pretty well secure. Um, so that's about it, guys. So if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll put the link to a an article I read in the community, um, UBNT community. I'll put that down in the description below. It, it has instructions based on you know, what we covered in this video, you could read the actual um, UBNT community article and uh, reference that as well if you need to do this. So again, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, please like, and please share. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.